If Tom Brady and Roger Goodell can't settle in the coming days, Judge Richard Berman wants them back in court August 31st and hopes to rule by September 4th, although he told the sides not to hold him to that date. It's a quick turnaround, which would be just six days before the Patriots season opener. Brady's suspension would then begin the following day, September 5th, according to our Sal Palantonio. Now we bring in one of Brady's former teammates, friend of the program, ESPN NFL analyst, Damon Woody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's get right to it. What should Brady do? I think he should continue to fight. I mean, listen, we're talking about we're talking about your last name. We talk about your legacy here. I mean, this is something that he's worked and crafted over a long period of time, and for him to quote unquote set you know potentially settle or give up on it or admit I mean, guilt or, or admit guilt. guilt. I mean, that would be a you know that would be a huge huge mark on his legacy. Um, you know, you look at the look at the court case. What Jer Judge Berman has has mentioned mm -hmm. in, the, in the previous in his last court hearing. I mean, there's a there's a lot of question marks, a lot of question marks, uh, a lot of things that he attacked the NFL on. So if you're Brady, you're feeling momentum right now. You're mm -hmm. feeling pretty good about your case, um, the outcome of the potential outcome of the case. Even if you lose. People still want to say you went down swinging and fighting against the NFL. Mm -hmm. I think in the end that will still be a win for Brady as far as his legacy is concerned. I like it. What do you think, Stephen A? Fair enough, but what the hell happened to your position on Tom Brady when this first went down? Uh, no, nothing happened to it. You no, saying? Nothing happened to it. I'm just being I'm just being real about it right now. Well, I know you're being real about it. I'm not questioning your realness. I'm asking you. What happened to your position? You were on Sports Center, right? When the ruling came down, and right. you said you were disappointed in Tom Brady. Okay, you said that you point. felt he was guilty. So and, I'm, and I'm, I'm still, asking and I st you, and I still, and what? I still do. You, you asked me if I, if I'm in Brady's shoes, what would I do? And I said I would continue to fight. I would fight it. Okay, so you're saying you would continue to fight even though you believe that he he's guilty. Yeah, I mean, listen. If I'm in that man's shoes, why not? Why not continue to? Why not fight it? Okay. Well, here's my thing. Tom Brady. I personally believe he shouldn't be suspended. I personally believe this is much ado about nothing. I can't believe it has lasted this long. All of those things are true. But to me, I I would stop short of Tom if I'm Tom Brady of just admitting that I lied, so I get that argument, and I don't totally disagree with you and skip on that. But if you are willing to admit you are, unco you are uncooperative, then you play the role in the NFL drawing the conclusion that they've drawn. And if that's the case, what level of culpability do you deserve for that? That's where we all have to, I, I mean, I don't know how we get to a point where a settlement is reached. I personally don't understand for the life of me why the NFL is insisting that Tom Brady admits guilt in all of this. Listen, you want the brother suspended. As long as there's a suspension that takes place, I think it's absolutely foolish and petty for the NFL to insist that he admits guilt. But, uh, uh, as lo so long as he gets a suspension. Now, to me, if he gets the suspension and it's acknowledging that he was uncooperative, I think that should be enough, and I don't think it should be anything to fight about after that because if you're Tom Brady, you have to at some point acknowledge you brought all of this on yourself. At least be willing to admit, hey, if I had acted better and a bit more cooperative, it, well, it may not have gotten to this point. At least be willing to commit, to admit that. As long as he's willing to admit that, as far as I'm concerned, it should be over. But who knows? I mean, right now, it's just, I'm exhausted talking about it, to be quite honest with you. Mm. I'm disgusted with it. I just think it's petty. I think it's petty. Deflated footballs, eight months? Eight months because of deflated footballs? I mean, damn. It's ridiculous. But it is what it is. Okay, but Stephen A., you know and I know this has become so much bigger than deflated footballs. You know and I know this is about the power of the owners versus the players. Mm -hmm. Because one player, the superstar quarterback of the New England Patriots, last year's Super Bowl MVP, is willing to fight this to the legal death to try to take down the commissioner 
and his integrity and credibility to question those to the point that you take him down and to your point maybe open Pandora's box in court where you say, uh-oh, the owners are now very vulnerable in court in ways they've never been before. That's what's, it's way beyond was the ball this much or this much. That, that's what's happening. But let me bring it back to I'm, Okay, go ahead. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, back go ahead. to Mr. Ahead. Woody. Okay, you stand by your position. You believe he had some guilt in this. Correct. Even though we have no smoking gun, we have, as Judge Berman has concluded, no direct evidence. It seems like the whole process was very unfair to Tom Brady, and we have, the, as Judge Berman called it, the quantum leap from the Wells report to all of a sudden a four-game suspension for what exactly? Non-cooperation? It, it doesn't make sense to Judge Berman. At least he's picking away, picking hole, shooting holes in the NFL's case. Yet you stand by your position that you believe he was guilty, why? Because I think, you know, the, the lack of cooperation, I think, you know, the, the destruction of the cell phone, to me, I go off common sense. I just My antennas are up as far as that's concerned. Why would you destroy your cell phone right when they, right in the meat of the investigation when they're about to, you know, interview or need, need certain information off of the cell phone? You kept your prior cell phone, but you destroyed the one that the, that the okay, lead was looking but, at. But that, that... It's, okay. There's some, I can't, that I, that's something I just can't get over right okay, now. Okay, I get that. But in fairness to Tom Brady, you realize his agent told him before he was interrogated by the, the Wells people that your cell phone cannot come into play here via the NFLPA. You cannot, that they cannot invade your right to privacy. So that will never become an issue. So that's all that he knew at that point. And they already had all of his texts, because it takes two to text, from Jastrzemski, the equipment manager, who they, they had his cell phone, they had the other McNally's cell phone. So anything Brady had texted to, to either of those guys, they had in their possession, and there was no smoking gun. So, but, but, Skip, how, but how do you, how do you, what, what sense can you make of the whole destruction of the cell phone? What, what, what sense can you make of that? I think we were told that Don Yee told him. He, he told, I I, that's what I just said. Yeah. Thompson. No, they, they said, yeah. you know, he told him before. You, you don't have to worry about it. And then Brady said, I, I, on, you know, just recurringly, I, I often destroy, I don't destroy it, I just change cell phones. But right, but I just find that the timetable so... It, suspicious. It, yeah, suspicious. Yeah. Right in the middle of the, in the, the investigation, all of a sudden you destroy it. To me, it's just, I, I give a lot of pause to that right there. Okay. Have you heard anything internally from people you know around the Patriots who have suspicions of this? No. Of what Tom knew or didn't know? No. Okay. Okay. Just checking for the record. Yeah. Okay. So you're just going on your, your own instincts. You think he was more than generally aware of what was happening to the footballs? I think so. Okay. And from what we understand... He brought it on himself, man. The owners are split he brought here. brought it on himself. And that's... And, 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 and here's the bottom line. And, you know, listen... We constantly sit here, if a guy gets in trouble off the field, whether it's speeding at 143 miles per hour with a 12-year-old in the car, whether it's domestic abuse, domestic violence, whether it's child abuse or whatever the case may be, whether it is dudes that can't stay off the weed, it doesn't matter. There are so many issues that we get into that we use it as a teachable moment so guys moving forward won't make the same mistake. Well, in this case, why can't we do that? When it comes to Tom Brady, whether it was you lying, covering up for the Patriots organization, or just being aloof and dismissive because you were a puppet following the advice of the Players Association and their high-priced Michael Jordan-style lawyer with the, with, with the innumerable billable hours and Jeffrey Kessler, the bottom line is, is that you came across as uncooperative to a league where Roger Goodell has dominion. And they're challenging that right now. Now, you can challenge it, and if you win, good for you. Chances are, however, you'll lose. You have to know this. You have to anticipate it. And when the bosses call you and they tell you this is serious business, you need to step up and handle this as honestly and candidly and, and, and as forthcomingly as you possibly can. You have an obligation to do that. And Tom Brady didn't do that. So in the end, he is somewhat culpable for where we are today. He's not an innocent bystander in all of this. Okay. He just isn't. You have forced me to reply one last time to your position. 
I think sure. he was an innocent sure. bystander. And I believe that through the Wells interrogation, he was astounded that he was being accused of something he had zero knowledge of. And he was shocked that he was minute. becoming the fall guy for a campaign Shut. to get the Patriots Shut. for both Spygate and Deflategate. Will, he became the fall will, guy. Will you open your eyes? Will They're you open wide your open. eyes? Was, did, you not just, did you not just finish saying a few minutes ago that Bill Belichick threw him under the bus the next day? Ask my quarterback. I don't have anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. So what was he blind to? What was he blind to? If Bill Belichick comes out less than 24 hours after an AFC championship game win and says, don't ask me about that, I don't know anything about that, mm -hmm. ask my quarterback, then shouldn't it have been clear? Is Tom Brady suddenly dumb? He can't see the forest from the trees? He couldn't see from that moment? That he was being hung out to dry? I think he's a little naive. You gonna naive. put all of this on Roger Goodell and Troy Vincent? I think he's a good guy. A little naive? Mm -hmm. the, the really? Mm -hmm. you, you gonna really sit up there and okay. say that? Yeah. Really? I'm gonna sit you gonna really sit up there and say, and say that? Because what have you said on this show numerous times? In the end, this is about protecting who in the organization? The head coach. Am I right about that? Do I so, think the head coach had wait knowledge of deflating wait, footballs? Wait a minute. Maybe. Wait a minute. Don't change the narrative. No, I you asked you a it. question. Did you not say, did you not say that Belichick threw him under the bus? Yeah. Uh, less than 24 so hours. So did the So what was the naivete? Where was the naivete then? From that moment forward, you knew they were coming for you because Belichick said he had nothing to do with it. And then the Wells investigation report came out and they exonerated Belichick and his staff. Mm -hmm. Who else was left? Who was left? Okay, and then what did I tell you two days after the Wells report? That three people close to Tom Brady had told me he is now declaring war on the commissioner. Didn't I tell you that? Sitting right here? And what's happened? Not only has he fought the war through court, he's winning. As Dave, Damien just said, that is not momentum, what I said. Hold on, first of all, first right? of all, first of all, don't give me some, don't give me some winning during the court because we don't know that. Number one, and number two, what I said was. Your coach threw you under the bus. So from the moment he threw you under the bus, according to Skip Bayless, how was he naive to what was going on then? Well, he was up to how? that point. Yeah. I mean, it, he was 24, really... it was less than 24 hours after the game. Yeah. Okay, well, they were all So that deflecting. means he knew from They're that moment deflecting. it was going to be on him. But Bob Kraft was defending Tom Brady at that point, and Brady was like, I don't know anything about he it. Said he was, he was wrong laughing to put his about it. And then the no, Go that's ahead, later. That you know, later. It, that's what you do. Because yeah. when it comes to your favorites, you got blinders on. You don't want to see. You don't want to see what he did. Oh, no, he's innocent. He didn't know. Okay. This is whoa, what he's whoa, saying, whoa. Damien, Molly. Oh, Tom, Tom Brady, Brady didn't he know. Didn't I mean, Bill Belichick didn't know. He didn't do anything. Uh, speaking of memory loss, you're the guy who just last week finally said, you know what? I don't think Tom Brady knew anything about this. You told me that on this show. I said that I don't. Hold it. I said that I don't believe that he had the footballs deflated. My point to you is that from the moment Bill Belichick threw him under the bus, it was clear that he was going to be a target. That's a different discussion. It was clear he was going to be a target. So how are you going to sit up there and say he was naive to what was potentially transpiring once Bill Belichick acknowledges, I got nothing to do with this. You need to ask my quarterback. Well, he that least, way it wasn't clear uh, then I told you that, that he was in the hot seat? No, he had his owner on his side. And then all of a sudden, his owner sold him out and took all the, the punishment. Guys, took guys, the penalties. sorry, but we have to go to break. Luckily, this is not over, and we have plenty more time to talk about it again. August 31st, that's when they need to settle by. And potentially, Tom Brady's September so 5th would be oh, the date uh, if the punishment uh, was instilled then. Damien, thanks so much for joining us. He didn't us. know. Oh, no problem. <laughs> all right, we move on to another vet, but this time in the NBA. Which one of these vets were voted as the favorite by the NBA's New rookie class. You might find this list interesting. That's coming up next.